All right, we are. Let's start our discussion today. Of course, this is a big story coming from down south. Karnataka government's new move to boost its revenue has now fueled a fresh controversy, and that too, quite literally. Dramatic scenes were witnessed in Karnataka throughout the day. Bullock cars also queued up on the streets of India's IT capital as the BJP staged a massive statewide stir against the Karnataka Congress government's decision to hike the sales tax on fuel. Now, what this has done is in turn increase the price of fuel by 3 rupees and the price of diesel by 3.5 rupees. The Karnataka government had increased the sales tax on fuel, which of course has made it costlier for consumers now to buy fuel. And the BJP is, on the other hand, trying to pressurize the government to roll back the fuel price hike. They were, of course, trying to send a message across that the Sidra Maya Sarkar is now desperate to fund its poll guarantees. Massive protests and drama unfolding at the Freedom Park, even as the BJP here stages this massive protest against the fuel price hike in Karnataka. Three rupees of a rise in petrol and diesel prices has sparked off this outrage and protest. The BJP says that this is a loot and a daylight robbery and the common man continues to pay the price. On one hand, the Congress says they provide guarantees. On the other, you're, you're also hearing ministers themselves are confessing that you know this uh, increase in price of fuel uh, will in fact fund the guarantees as well. I have Dr. Ashwat Narayan here with me. Uh, uh, Ashwat sir, if you could tell us. Sir, on the main thing, that you will not stop these protests. We totally condemn the Congress government. It has been always anti-people. They have been always only one thing they are doing: price rise, price rise, price rise. That's the word from uh, Mr. Uh, who says that all that the Congress has done is, uh, you know, only increase uh, uh, fuel prices or other commodity prices as well. We've seen, uh, you know, the BJP uh, raise its voice against uh, the rise, uh, you know, as far as uh, stamp duty is concerned, liquor prices are concerned. Uh, you know, milk prices are concerned. Now they're saying this is once again going to really affect the common man quite a bit. The Congress remains defined. They say, in comparison to other states, Karnataka, uh, you know, the prices of fuel, even after this hike, much lesser. And this is something that's the need of the hour. Dhrusa, Yiriti on the Tirmani ke bandhi ron to aksham ya aparada. Nani ho mukhya mantri bilag vatta hai madte na. Janara sankasrona artha mad kondo. ಈಗಲಾದರೂ ನೀವು ಏರಿಕೆ ಮಾಡುವಂಥ ದರವನ್ನು ವಾಪಸ್ ಪಡೀಬೇಕು ಅಂತೇಳಿ ಈ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಒತ್ತಾಯವನ್ನು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಸಿದ್ದರಾಮಯ್ಯವರು ಯಾವತ್ತೋ ಅದನ್ನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಕೇಂದ್ರ ಸರ್ಕಾರದ ಕಡೆ ಬೆಟ್ಟು ತೋರಿಸೋದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ನೀವೇನು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಿ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಬಹಳ ಮುಖ್ಯವಾಗಿದೆ ಏಕ ಬಾರ್ ನಹಿ ದೋ ಬಾರ್ ಪೆಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಅವ್ರ ಡೀಸೆಲ್ ಕಾ ದಾಮ್ ಬಡ ಹೇ ಕಾಂಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಪಹಲೆ ಉನ್ನೇ ಬತಾಯ ಹಮ್ ಕರಿ ಕಮ್ ಕರೆಂಗೆ ಆಜ ಕಮ್ ನಹಿ ಕಿಯಾ ಹೇ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಮೇ ಲಗಭಗ ಪಾಂಚ ರೂಪಾಯಿ ದೋ दो बार पांच रुपए पेट्रोल के लिए डीजल के लिए साढ़े पांच रुपए खड़ाया है well there you have it the bjp as expected of course breaking the uh, breaking up this issue they are protesting as well but it doesn't look like just a political issue now even the aam aadmi seems fed up trying to accommodate the freebie culture on one hand you have ministers coming out and stating that there is not going to be much development given the fact that there are guarantees that they need to accommodate on the other hand people are now having to pay up extra just because the government can accommodate this entire freebie culture take a look at what the janta has to say ma'am this is all political uh, this thing and uh, stunt what they have reduced and now again the things are in square one only people are just not interested to reward back that is why people are now giving the vote to the nota because we don't have now options and nobody is ready to listen if you if you are traveling often i think it would be a really big impact uh, let's say petrol prices were 9998 but now it's almost 102 103 yeah. so per kilometer it's going to increase and it's let's say you are someone who travels quite often it's going to be a monthly expense again for you it it's definitely a burden on the common people because uh, we are bearing taxation your tds and plus this is an add on 3 rupees into if i'm filling a fuel for let's say in my car for 2000 rupees it's per liter 3 rupees more so it's definitely the congress probably trying to fulfill their guarantees which they've not been able to accomplish 
the infrastructure is in dilapidated condition. Uh, we have been f fighting for our potholes. We have been fighting for our proper roads and commutation. Uh, absolutely disappointed. Affected by three rupees because we daily we we do like a delivery jobs. Uh, the delivery guys, Suki, Zamet, all guys, it will, it will be affected to us okay. because we are small people. So by raising three, three or four rupees for petrol, it will guarantee affect us. So there you heard it. It's not just the BJP that is coming out and voicing its opinion, but also the common people are not really happy with the decision taken by Chief Minister Sidramaya. But meanwhile, the Karnataka CM, who is of course facing allegations of hiking prices to finance his own freebie culture, something that got him to power. Now Sidramaya has come out and slammed the BJP for their protest. Now Sidramaya said that the BJP ruled states, in fact even the neighbouring states of Karnataka have higher fuel prices and in fact the state governments are now left with limited revenue generating options as the centre collects most of the GST. Rajya, Artikwa ki Diwali aagi de, guarantee yojane gale ki dhud kordi ke, guarantee yojane gale ki dhud karcha karte gota. Naam gidri na, i petrol mele, diesel mele, belayer se dhud dhud mur saur koti barbo. Arvot saur koti. Karnataka da virudhi itta takan dogli ke. Now, Prayatna Madi Divyaste. But the number is Tala Echmar Rukuda, Pakadraja Lil Amigita, Jasti BJP Sarkara, Itakanta Raja Lukuda, Namigita Jasti. Central excise, uh, it's more than 35 rupees per litre. Will the government of India reduce that? If the government of India is ready to reduce the central excise, well, all state governments will be happy to reduce it. But first, the government of India must reduce the central excise, 35 plus rupees. Well, this is now the Congress, of course, defending itself. The Chief Minister going on to blame the centre over the centre issue. But meanwhile, Union Petroleum Minister Hardi Puri has responded. He has countered Chief Minister Sidramaya and said that Karnataka is one of the highest tax devolution. And if any state shouldn't be talking about it, it should be Karnataka that should be looking at this and not really putting the blame on the centre. You come to our 10 years, 2004 and 14, and the increase in petrol was only 26%. Madam, 26% as against 84%, and 43% as against 111%. Okay, you put that aside. What is the situation today between BJP rule states and non BJP rule states? The central government, when it's faced with a crisis, and there have been two major crises, one in February of 2022 when the Russia-Ukraine war took place. More recently, Madam, problems in the Gulf when Houthis were attacking merchant shipping, including oil-carrying vessels, when there are problems between certain countries in the region. I don't want to go into this detail. In spite of that, we never allowed any disruption either in availability no shortage anywhere in the country. In affordability, India is the only country in the world where prices of petrol and diesel have come down over a representative period by 2% in petrol and slightly short of 1% in the case of diesel. Our oil companies have incurred losses. In the case of one, it was, I think, gas, they incurred a loss of 28,000 crores. We had to compensate them at 21,000 crores. In the case of diesel, at one time, there was an under-recovery of 10 rupees a litre. And yet, we didn't allow prices to go up. Why? So, there you have it. That's the Union Petroleum Minister himself, Direct, coming out and hitting back at the Karnataka government.
is clearly stating that Karnataka, if it really wants, it can still sustain with the existing model of the tax devolution as well. In fact, we'll be discussing this and a lot more. And joining us on the broadcast are our guests for this discussion. Ashwini Shankar, who's a BJP spokesperson. Satya Prakash from the Congress. Vijay Grover, who's a senior journalist. And also Sandeep Aniruddhan, who's, of course, the founder of Citizens Agenda for Bengaluru. Mr. Satya Prakash, let me start with you first. Now, massive protest and the BJP is making one allegation very clearly is that let's not even talk about economy or what the Congress is trying to do. All of these efforts by the Congress, the fuel price increase and everything else, all, is, all of this is just to fund your poll guarantees and all of these are just desperate measures because you don't have any money left. Ashish, look at who is coming to the roads. The people who are coming to the roads are those people who increase excise duty from 3 rupees 60 paisa to around 32 rupees, as high as 32 rupees in 2020 the, the On the petrol, it was 7 rupees 97 paisa, they increased it to 31 rupees. That means on a nutshell, they increased by 800-900% on diesel and on petrol, nearly 300-400%. These are the people who are coming on the streets. They don't have any morality to come onto the streets. Look at who is coming onto the streets. Those who brought uh, LPG prices to 1,100 rupees from 350 rupees. So they have no moral right to come. Let me understand. Let me tell you some points why we had to raise our, uh, the, uh, our uh, levies on petrol and diesel. We need to understand that among the neighboring country states in South India, we are the least. Even after a 3 rupees high, you see, diesel is costing 89 rupees roughly and 103 rupees petrol. In neighboring AP, it is costing 110 petrol and 97 rupees on the diesel. In Kerala, 108 rupees and 97 rupees. Telangana, 108 rupees and 96 rupees. So when you compare to our apple to apple of our... Mr. Satya states, Prakash, we, we have, have all the data. Mr. Satya Prakash, we have all the data about the fuel prices. In fact, we are running that on our screens right now as you speak. So... Uh, you, you, don't, you don't be concerned about it. We're, of course, informing our viewers as to what the rates are in different states as well and how Karnataka compares. But my bigger question here is how the chief minister is responding. One of the most shocking statements, which I think is really problematic, the way Sidramaya has responded to this, he's come out and said that why should people be so bothered? They've saved enough money from the poll guarantees. They'll spend a little more on the fuel. Is this the kind of statement that a chief minister should be making, especially when common people are voicing their concerns about uh, rising prices? He said that to your question, how will, be, how will people be able to cope up with this price rise? He said, there are a lot of pro-poor policies that we are giving. We are doling out nearly 60,000 crores to the people. And this price rise, the amount of money that we are going to get back is a meager 3,000 crores. That is what he has said. To what BJP is proclaiming that you know this praise is, is going to you know, affect so many people. We also need to understand what is this BJP government doing. What they are doing is of the, of the uh, 30, uh, 30 rupees of uh, excise duty that they are putting, most of the excise duty is on system sarkar that doesn't come into the tax devolution pool. So whatever money they are looting is not coming back to the states because the basic excise duty is just 1 rupees 81 paisa. That means 30, 32% of that 1 rupee 81 paisa means we are getting only 40, 45 paisa in return. States have to uh, mop up their resources, they have to mop up their revenues. Today the states have only three line items to mop up their revenues. One is stamps okay. and I'll, I'll, get states in I'll get in Ashwini Shankar from the BJP now. I'll get in Ashwini Shankar from the BJP. Ashwini Shankar, now, do you think this is some sort of an ego battle now between the states and the centre? On one hand, the centre says that, well, Karnataka has one of the highest tax devolutions. They, they should be figuring it out themselves as to how they can manage this. On the other hand, the state government is now saying that centre eats into a lot of our tax revenue. So we don't have any option than increasing the prices. Do you think this is an ego battle between the centre and the state, which at the end of the day, the citizens are having to suffer? Thank you, Ashish. Being a more responsible opposition party in the state, we are answerable to the public of the state. And our uh, Chief Minister Sidaramaya is very famous for his arrogant and adamant behavior and giving irresponsible statements. Let me just bring it to your notice that when the uh, Sidaramaya took his uh, swearing ceremony happened in the 2023, as well in this particular year uh, when he uh, we had the budget for the state, he claimed and he made a statement that the state has already kept 55,000 crores for the freebies and there won't be any 
hike in any of the prices in the state. So this was the statement made by the Chief Minister of Karnataka. He always lies to the public and he always misleads the public. You know, being a government, being into governance, it is the major duty of the state government to act as the custodians of the public money. But here, every day, every night, we see scams happening and all the funds of the government being, you know, uh, diverted for the scams and for all these uh, unwanted uh, expenditures outside the state. What's happening? What happened during okay. the elections? Let Ash me just, you know, Ashwini Shankar, uh, you made uh, a very Vindhi interesting point that. there. You said the yes. BJP as a responsible opposition is answerable to the public and therefore you're trying to keep the government in check. Exactly. Therefore, the exactly. BJP is trying to ensure that the fuel prices are not increased. So, exactly. Ms. Ashwini Shankar, Ashwini, what happens to the second. BJP's one, responsibility one in states like Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Bihar? I'll ask my team to run the, uh, run the graphics there on our screens about the prices. Now, we are talking about the prices in other BJP ruled states which are much higher than Karnataka. Yes, Mr. Madhya Rajesh, Pradesh, it's 106.47. Rajasthan, it's 104.85. Bihar is 105.16. If the BJP is so concerned about the people, why aren't you speaking up there as well? Why is it only Karnataka? So this again raises the question and validates the Congress's allegation that BJP is only doing this for politics. If they're really, uh, if they're really concerned about people, they should be raising voices in their own states as well. You can even see what is the price in Telangana today. It's the highest in the country. It's crossed 107 rupees. Okay, even now our Union Minister for Petroleum also made Ashwini it Shankar, why is Ashwini Shankar, you're the BJP spokesperson. I'll, I'll, I'll ask Satya Prakash to answer about Telangana. You please answer about Madhya Pradesh, Bihar and Maharashtra. Yes. See, we all know that, you know, the hike has been in, from the central government side. It is due to the Ukraine-Russia war. And during from the COVID also, the price also hiked. But now what is happening in Karnataka is not just in the petrol and the diesel amount. We see excise duty tax hike. We see stamps duty and registration fee hike. We see immobile assets tax hike, stamp duty basic price 40% hike, affidavit rates 20 rupees to 50 rupees hike, motor vehicle tax hike, power per unit hike, property tax hike by 40%, water bill cost per unit hike, milk and milk products price hike. So now the last resort for the state government is the price hike because they made all these statements, announcements of the freebies unscientifically without consulting the economists of the state. You know, Siddharamaya himself claims that he is a budget Brahma and he has, you know, put forth the, so, the state budget Ashwini for Ashwini Shankar, again, once time. again, the point becomes okay. the same. If the BJP is so concerned Nothing about the public, the public, you have Nothing the government at the center. The why don't you let go of some percentage of the CGST? Let, why don't this you let go what? of some percentage of the center's when, tax? Even that will help yes, the public. When, no, no, see. 19% whatever is the central is, you know, uh, playing the role here, okay, that is actually a fixed thing, okay, that has to be taken a decision. But with the major tax levy, what we are talking about here is in the hands of the state government. If Siddharamaya and the Congress-led state government here say, says that they are people-friendly, they are public-friendly, why don't they think, think about this part, a part of the burden here for the public? Okay, we'll and talk about the politics. I'll get back to the politics. Let me go across to Vijay Grover now, who's a senior journalist. Ashwini Shankar will come back to the politics of this. Vijay Grover, I'll get in Vijay Grover now. Mr. Vijay Grover, help me understand what's happening here in Karnataka, not just Karnataka, but across the nation as a whole. No matter how the Congress now defends itself in Karnataka, the BJP, whether someone agrees or not, has now successfully managed to paint a picture that Congress, just before the elections, over-promised and now they're not able to deliver and they're now cutting corners. Well, see, uh, the fact of the matter is, you know, the fact is there is a lot of pressure on Siddharamaya. We need to understand that, you know, the freebies that are being given, the benefits that are reaching the women, especially, certainly are a burden on the Exchequer. But as far as, you know, political parties are concerned, I'm sure it's a blame game, which is like always. And, you know, uh, this time around, the BJP has been able to, you know, mount a lot of pressure because just ahead of the coming session, this would be something that will, you know, put the BJP, uh, uh, Sidharamaya government down. Now, clearly, uh, you know, taxation is a huge burden in today's uh, date because inflation is a big challenge. The last month figure was, you know, very happy to read 4.5%, but otherwise inflation has been pretty high in the past as well. 
but this decline does not mean that the incremental effect of the uh, uh, inflation is lost it is not lost we now need to understand the fact that today the common man and you know political parties will play their game but the last person on their mind is the common man that is one person they do not even take uh, concern about so clearly this is something you know blaming every political party i would say that you know today the kind of you know stress that you know the common man is in uh, with the you know financial expenses that are mounting and you know the prices I mean, look at vegetable prices. It's like so. Know, so basically, the burden all comes down to the common man. Certainly, and that is the last person that right. they think also, about. Right. Also, also, Mr. Vijay Grower, I just have to interrupt you there. We have we have a press conference. We have a press conference from Mr. Rahul Gandhi coming in right now. Sorry, I have to interrupt you there. Let's quickly cut across live to that. कानून क्या हो गया? कानून इसके लिए इजाजत नहीं देती. इसीलिए वो बड़े दुख के साथ बड़े सोच समझ के आ, हमने ये तय करा कि वायनाड से खाली सीट पे प्रियंका जी लड़ना चाहिए और इसीलिए हम पार्टी के ओर से और मेरे ओर से उनको धन्यवाद देता हूँ कि हमारी बात को उन्होंने रखी है और माना है दोनों ने इसीलिए मैं आपके सामने आके डिक्लेयर कर रहा हूं कि दोनों एक तो रायबरेली सीट रहेगी और वायनाड में भी वो प्रियंका जी रहने से वहां के लोगों को भी एक हिम्मत मिलेगी कि राहुल गांधी जी यहां से छोड़े तो भी वो छोड़े तो छोड़ के तो जाने वाले नहीं है छोड़े तो भी प्रियंका जी एक उन्होंने एक ये स्लोगन दिया है यूपी में जब ये हाथरस का ये हादसा हुआ था तो उस वक्त उन्होंने कहा था मैं लड़की हूँ लड़ सकती हूँ तो वो लड़की लड़ सकती है वहाँ से और हमारे पार्टी की तरफ से मैं उनको धन्यवाद देता हूँ क्योंकि बहुत कठिनाई में भी उन्होंने हमारा साथ दिया और मैं बहुत ही उनका आभारी भी हूँ क्योंकि उन्होंने इतनी कोशिश करके एक तो उत्तर प्रदेश में बहुत सी जीत दिलाई दूसरे जगह जो हम खोए हुए सीट थे अमेठी उसको पुनरुज्जीत उन्होंने किया और राहुल जी के सीट पे भी उन्होंने बहुत मेहनत की और वो भी हमको जीता है तो जीत बहुत उनके हाथ में है इसीलिए ये दोनों काम हम करने जा रहे हैं और आप सबको धन्यवाद आपको अरे वो आगे की बात है आज आगे नहीं नहीं आज के दिन का ये निर्णय है अगर ये मानने के बाद ही आगे का आएगा वो भी मैं बता दूंगा धमकी धमकी तो दी है धमकी तो दी है प्रेसिडेंट धमकी तो दी है नहीं मेरा मेरा वन मिनट सॉरी मेरा रायबरेली से और वायनाड से इमोशनल कनेक्शन है पिछले पाँच सालों में मैं वायनाड का एमपी था और वायनाड के सब लोगों ने हर पार्टी के लोगों ने प्यार दिया तो उसके लिए मैं दिल से धन्यवाद करता हूं और पूरी जिंदगी उसको याद रखूंगा प्रियंका वायनाड से चुनाव लड़ेगी मगर मैं भी पीरियोडिकली वायनाड जाऊंगा और जो वायदे हमने वायनाड को किए थे उनको हम पूरा करेंगे रायबरेली का पुराना रिश्ता है आ, काफी खुशी हो रही है कि मैं उनको फिर से रिप्रेजेंट करूंगा मगर आसान निर्णय नहीं था मुश्किल निर्णय था क्योंकि जुड़ाव 
दोनों के साथ है सो so, आई हैव एन इमोशनल रिलेशनशिप विद बोथ रायबरेली एंड द पीपल ऑफ वाइन आर एंड द लास्ट फाइव ईयर्स एज मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट ऑफ वाइन आर हैव बीन ए फैंटेस्टिक एक्सपीरियंस अ वेरी इंजॉयबल एक्सपीरियंस द पीपल ऑफ वाइन आर स्टूड विद मी द पीपल ऑफ वाइन आर गेव मी लव एंड अफेक्शन एवरी सिंगल पर्सन रिगार्डलेस ऑफ पार्टी दे गेव मी सपोर्ट लव एंड अफेक्शन दे गेव मी एनर्जी टू फाइट इन अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट टाइम सो आई विल नेवर फर्गेट दैट आई वॉन्ट एवरी वन इन वायन आर टू नो दैट प्रियंका इज गोइंग टू फाइट द इलेक्शन इन वायन आर बट आई एम गोइंग टू बी अ फ्रीकुंट विजिटर टू वायन आर एंड आई एम गोइंग टू बी अवेलेबल टू द पीपल ऑफ वायन आर एंड द कमिटमेंट्स दैट आई हैव मेड वी विल स्टैंड बाय दैम एंड वी विल ट्राई एंड डिलीवर ऑल दोज कमिटमेंट्स शी इज गोइंग टू बी she is going to fight the election i am confident she is going to win the election and she is going to be a very good representative for the people of wynar people of wynar can uh, think about it like this you have now two members of parliament one is my sister and one is me and my doors are always open for you throughout the rest of my life and i love every single person in wynar thank you pranka ji aap kaise hain wynar ke bolne ke liye बहुत खुश हूँ मैं आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी एबल टू रिप्रेजेंट वायनाड एंड ऑल आई सी इज दैट आई वॉन्ट लेट दैम फील हिज एबसेंस एज ही सेड ही कम मेनी टाइम्स विथ मी बट आई विल वर्क एज हार्ट एंड आई विल ट्राई माई बेस्ट टू मेक एवरीबडी हैप्पी एंड टू बी अ गुड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव और रायबरेली के साथ तो मैं मेरा बहुत ही पुराना रिश्ता भी है और 20 सालों से मैंने काम किया है दोनों रायबरेली और अमेठी में तो वो रिश्ता तो कहीं मतलब किसी भी तरह से टूट नहीं सकता उसको कायम रखने के लिए हम दोनों हैं और भैया की मैं मदद रायबरेली में भी करूंगी और जैसे इन्होंने कहा हम दोनों रायबरेली में भी हम दोनों मौजूद होंगे और वायनाद में दोनों को दोनों को दो सांसद मिल रहे हैं सिंपल सी बात है पॉलिटिकल लाइफ का इलेक्टोरल डिब्यूट है हर राजनेता चुनाव में जाना चाहता आप पहली बार चुनाव में जा रही है क्या कहेंगी इस बारे में किस तरह की आपकी जो इस समय भावना है एंड आई यू नर्वस No, not at all. Vega ji, I'm not nervous at all. बनना चाहिए इसको लेके पूरी पार्टी मांग रही है आपकी क्या राय है अपने भाई को लेके? वो राय मैंने भाई को दे दी है. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Rahul Gandhi will be representing Raipurli in the Lok Sabha and he's given up the Wynad seat and a bigger headline I would say is that Priyanka Gandhi is all set to make her poll debut from Wynad this of course means that Rahul Gandhi will in fact be representing Raipurli of course a big big suspense there ending from the Congress party a key huddle there which was underway at Mallikarjun Kharge's residence over this entire issue has now ended and the formal announcement has also been made Right uh, let's get back into the discussion that we were having our guest continues to stay on with us uh, apologies everyone we of course had a big breaking there coming in as far as the congress is concerned mr satyaprakash will be very happy in fact with the decision that the congress has made but uh, meanwhile i'll of course uh, take the point of mr sandeep anirudhan who's been waiting very patiently mr anirudhan let's also look at what the congress is promising on one hand you have the poll guarantees which of course does not cover everyone in the state now the congress deputy chief minister after a few days comes out and says that well don't expect a lot of development because we already have a lot of money to spend on these poll guarantees and now you also have prices of essential commodities being increased as a common citizen how do you look at it because not everyone is going to get benefits of these guarantees but everyone is pretty much going to pay for it well yeah uh, see uh, if the common people voted the government in for the freebies well then they deserve the freebies but uh, it was not promised to the citizens that the freebies will come at the cost of development or uh, regular governance so uh, that is not a good thing but more importantly i think what is missing in this narrative see when this congress government came to power uh, the bangalore city minister dk shivkumar came out uh, 
with a lot uh, sounding very dynamic saying he'll hold a brand bengaluru conclave will take opinions from public and all that but after which we don't see any intelligent announcements ever uh, the the most most extremely ill advised uh, announcements keep coming one after the other first was an announcement that the government wants to build a tunnel road project which is uh, estimated to cost some 50000 crores uh, in bengaluru right now contractors are not being paid routine maintenance of roads and footpaths is not happening because contractors are still waiting for bills 3 or 4 years ago none of the regular maintenance is happening and essential projects are not happening but the government wants to spend 50000 crores on a uh, outlandish hairbrain project called the tunnel road project which is ill advised every transport planner says that that will not benefit the city it will only aid private uh, transport use more importantly i am not really against or for uh, ex- uh, additional avenues of taxation or realization of income but they have to be employed intelligently you can have a lot of intelligent ways of doing it with uh, which can mold public behavior in certain ways everybody knows bengaluru is going through a terrible traffic issue so actually pointed out there needs problems. to be efficient planning no, and that's a big question that needs to be asked point. if these poll no, guarantees were efficiently planned out no 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 okay okay make, make, make a point make a point make a point yeah the point is there are intelligent ways of doing it which will help actually reduce the load that the city feels like for example if you have congestion pricing mm, then right. uh, we call ourselves the it capital why can't we use intelligent ways of uh, harnessing money have cameras throughout the city this is done across the world in london tokyo singapore uh, dubai you have cameras everywhere make sure that salit like intelligent cards are installed on every vehicle and vehicles which go through congested areas get a tax automatically it will bring more money to the city at the same time it will not make everybody pay for it it's only the people who use certain services who pay for it secondly you can uh, this even right. the high court has right. been asking the government why they still haven't come out with the parking policy that will be a huge amount of money the government can collect right. from the, right. the use of uh, why should everybody Uh, have to bear the burden people who right, use right right mr anirudh i'll get your point there you are of course trying to point out that there are of course a lot of things that the government can do and all of that has to be done efficiently that's the core uh, crux of what you're trying to say also uh, let me go across to mr satyaprakash oh, who no, i see is smiling since that announcement came in from the congress mr satyaprakash <laughs> you're of course smiling with this uh, with this congress announcement but are yes, you going to give any reason for the people to smile who are of course queuing outside that poly, uh, that uh, uh, petrol bunks they're of course having to pay extra the big question here is the fact that while on one hand your poll guarantees are benefiting one section of the society nobody is denying that but the bigger problem is that these increased prices a lack of developments as the bjp claims all of that is affecting the other section who are also having to pay for it see as if you need to understand look at the volume that this uh, our, our promises have been reaching 1 crore 25 lakh households are getting free electricity today more than 1 crore 20 lakh families are getting you know that 5 kg rice more than nearly you know 20 crore women have uh, uh, sorry 100 crore women tickets have been uh, uh, given for women free so look at the magnitude nearly more than 85% of the total the karnataka households are getting one benefit or the other and what what this will happen is 3 to 3 rupees increase will just give 3000 crores while we are spending 60000 crores as beneficiary scheme for all the people of karnataka the bjp spokesperson was saying you know but mr satyaprakash your chief minister says that people have got benefits with the poll guarantees and they shouldn't mind paying a little extra now a lot of people who have never traveled free in a bus they have not got the money that uh, unemployed youth are getting even they are having to pay where are they getting money from now what are the benefits that they are getting that's a bigger question the bigger question is people who are not even getting the benefits of your freebies it's not even like there's a welfare scheme at play this is a freebie that you're uh, offering so people who are not even getting that benefit are having to pay for it no let us look at shakti scheme i mean all women of karnataka are eligible to get into the shakti scheme i am sure 95% women in this state have at least done one or two bus rides and that shows i am telling you i am giving you figures 1 crore 20 lakh households in karnataka there are hardly 1 lakh 20 ashwini shankar wants to counter you ashwini shankar go ahead 
Ashwini Shankar wants to counter you now. I would like to bring to the notice of the entire nation that from past three months, the five kilo rice what Sidharamaya had assured is not being given, and the past three months, you know, they are not given two thousand rupees for for many of the districts. If they give it for uh, three to four districts for two to three months. The next no, two no, to three no, months, no, no. they are giving to another three, four districts. That was because this Modi ji had your elections for one month. Three months, he's what can we do? Again, he is just following his leader in the state here. So you know, Shakti, they claim that they give travel, free travel. You know, like Ashwini Shankar, Shankar, are you trying to say the that these poll guarantees are the just a jumla? Not everyone is getting it. Is this what you are trying to say? Yes, exactly, no, exactly. No, 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 and the condition of the buses they are using for the Shakti scheme is horrible. It's it's horrible and pathetic, you know. And if at all they are giving Shakti scheme, let it be a bit scientific. If for you all women you, having I have a challenge, I see seven thousand rupees salary being a government worker, let's see the buses. Mr. Satyaprakash, very serious allegations, very serious allegations coming in from the BJP there. And the BJP yes, clearly pointing let, out that let, most let, of the guarantees let, that you're making on TV. TV channels and also during press conferences, none of them are being delivered on ground. And the people of Karnataka are trusting the Congress government. Ashwini Shankar, let Ashwini Shankar let let Mr. Satyaprakash respond. Mr. Satyaprakash, please respond. She is making a very serious allegation. Yeah, compare a KSRTC bus with a bus in Gujarat. Compare a KSRTC bus with a bus in Madhya Pradesh. Compare a KSRTC bus with a bus in Bihar. You will come to my dhun ka dhun, pani ka pani. Mr. Satyaprakash, we are talking about Karnataka right now. Let's let's stick to Karnataka. Mr. Satyaprakash, let's stick to Karnataka. She is she is asking you a very serious question. Answer me one question. I am telling you, in Karnataka, KSRTC has raised three thousand five hundred. Ashwini Shankar, hold on. Ashwini Shankar, hold on. Let's Mr. Satyaprakash respond. One second. Where is the amount? Ashwini Shankar, hold on. Let Mr. Satyaprakash respond. Go ahead, Mr. Satyaprakash. Ashish ji, when we put this scheme, no, what this BJP guy said, no, ये तो दीवाना होने वाला है. They cannot give us the promises. We give the promises. We did what we promised the people of this state. You need to understand. BJP said that our coffers will be empty. Our coffers were not empty. Today we are just raising raising a meager three thousand crores from this. What what about maybe we needed seven lakh crores across India from the fuel loot? It is a great. Mr. Satya Prakash, if your coffers are not empty, why does your deputy chief minister come out and say that don't expect a lot of development? See what he said was last year. Since we had to build up one second, ma'am. One second, one second. See, since we had to do all this and we promised that all the five guarantees we are going to fulfil in the first three four months in the first year itself, there will be some problem. But you look at the size of the budget. The size of the budget is continuously increasing. Look at the um, uh, GST collections. Our GST collections is number two across the country. So, but the, what the Modi government is doing is it is showing stuff much of the treatment by not giving proper dev uh, devolution of tax to Karnataka, and we have to raise revenues. How do we raise revenues? Can we bring it from our homes? We have to bring so some people's money only. The house will people. pay for the You are burdening the common man of Karnataka. So you are burdening the common I, man, I, public of Karnataka, for your freedom. As a, as a, okay, as a, as this is not fair. This we won't tolerate at all. And when you was, when you announced when you announced the freebies, what did you say? What it's for the entire people of Karnataka. Ashwini 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 Shankar Okay. You, you had a very fierce debate here with uh, Ashwini Shankar, Mr. Sandeep Panirudan has been very patiently listening. Sandeep, Sandeep please make a point. Yeah. All I'll say is, uh, I request the Congress uh, representative to go to your Chief Minister and Deputy Chief Minister and say only one thing. If you don't have money, please don't spend money on a white elephant project like the Tunnel Road project. Please cancel it. That will be very honest. Second thing, please initiate parking policy. Please initiate congestion pricing in Bengaluru. Not only will you get a lot of money and income, it will also regulate traffic better in the city. These two are very essential. Can you please go to Mr. D.K. Shivkumar and tell him these things? We'll be very grateful. Thank you. Right. Right. Right, Mr. Sandeep, a very interesting point there. Mr. Satyaprakash, 
let's uh, wrap up with you now. Uh, yeah, make yeah. a concluding remark, please, because clearly there, this is the this is not a political voice you just heard. This is a uh, this is a voice of a common citizen. When exactly yeah. do citizens of Karnataka expect the government to start implementing new policies instead of trying to balance between giving out freebies and managing the state uh, treasury? I feel very sad when someone calls this as freebies. Please don't belittle the poor of this country, state. It is a pro poor measure. It is a measure that you know it is going to bring lifestyles little up. When we give thousand rupees or two thousand rupees to a woman, she is not going to build a bungalow. She is not going to go to Bangkok. She is after all will be using for her daily needs. And look at our you know uh, GST collections. Our GST collections are on the rise. What I am saying is the BJP lacks morality to. Mr. Satya Prakash, I just have thirty seconds on the. Broadcast, please make your point quickly. Yeah, who brought 350 rupees gas in to 2000 rupees? They were the ones who increased 3 rupees 50 paisa, you know, the duty to 32 rupees in 2021. Isn't it? So then they, they, they don't have more right to question us. What you would request them is the few crude price is low. Let Mr. Modi get down the you know, the base price so that uh, it will benefit all everyone. When the base price comes up, right, Mr. Satya Prakash. All right. I, th I, th I think you're repeating your points now. I think I think I think that's exactly what the BJP is also asking, and also the citizens are asking. When exactly is the Karnataka government trying to? Play the balancing. When are you stop? When are you going to stop playing the balancing act between balancing the treasury and also your freebie culture that the BJP is alleging? Appreciate you joining us on the broadcast, and also appreciate our uh, guests from the BJP and also Sandeep Anirudhan for joining us on Thank the broadcast. You.